Hello, I'm Rob Swick. I'm Chief of the Division of Field Operations for the Directorate of Whistleblower Protection Programs. I'm here with Sean Volrath, the Regional Supervising Investigator for the Denver Regional Office. I'm here today to talk to you about how to file a whistleblower complaint. So Sean, tell me, when should a worker file a whistleblower complaint? Rob, you should file a whistleblower complaint when your employer takes an adverse action against you and you think that the adverse action was taken because your employer knew or suspected you did something protected by the law. But please understand that these deadlines um, can be as short as 30 days after the adverse action takes place. How can I file? You can file an, a whistleblower complaint online at whistleblowers.gov. You can call the general number at 800 321 6742, or you can write directly to OSHA. Well, can I file anonymously? Whistleblower complaints cannot be filed anonymously. However, you can file a safety and health complaint anonymously. Let's see. Well, what information do I need? So you need to provide your contact information, which consists of your name, your address, your phone number, and potentially your email if you have one, the name of the employer, and a description of what took place, including when the adverse action occurred. Other information is often helpful, but will be addressed at a later part of the investigation. Do I need a lawyer? No. You can file without having a lawyer. OSHA's whistleblower investigators are neutral fact finders and will investigate your case. However, you can be represented by a lawyer, a union representative, but it's not required. Let's see, can I file both a safety complaint and a whistleblower complaint? Yes. If you were retaliated against for raising a safety related issue, you can file a whistleblower complaint and a health and safety complaint. Well, do whistleblower complaints have to be safety related? No, OSHA administers over 20 different whistleblower statutes on many issues. Not all of them are safety related. To learn more, you can visit whistleblowers.gov. Can you give me an example of a complaint? Yes. So as a, an employee, if you were to observe a safety related concern and brought that concern directly to your supervisor or your manager, and in turn, you believe that uh, the company took an adverse action against you, um, that would fall under the whistleblower protection um, program. Let's see. Well, what happens after I file my complaint? So once the whistleblower investigator receives the complaint, it will be reviewed and assigned. Then you should expect either a phone call from the investigator to take down your information and get the facts of the case, or you can receive a letter that will allow you to write down uh, the same information and return it. What happens at the end of the investigation? So at the conclusion of the, uh, the whistleblower investigation, there are three different outcomes that can take place depending on the statute that the case was filed under. The first is that secretary's findings are ordered that can either order or deny relief. The second is that the case is sent to federal district court where it can be litigated. And the third is that the uh, case is uh, sent to the national office for a request for review and those are in cases that are dismissed. Thank you for taking the time today to learn how to file a whistleblower complaint. For further information, you can visit whistleblowers.gov.